Let's get right into it. 9. Emotional GPS Malfunction You ever open your phone just to check the time and suddenly you're on their profile like it's a muscle reflex? Congratulations! Your brain has quietly reassigned its navigation system. When you get emotionally attached, the brain starts tagging one specific person as relevant to survival. Not important, not interesting, survival. So your attention system, the same one that once helped your ancestors not get eaten by lions, keeps redirecting your thoughts toward them. You're not choosing to think about them. Your brain is doing background processing like just checking, are they still there? Cool, carry on. This happens because attachment boosts dopamine and oxytocin, which train your brain to associate that person with safety and reward. So every idle moment becomes a mental pop-up ad featuring their face. Basically, your brain installed emotional Google Maps, and now every road says, turn left toward them. 8. Memory becomes selective propaganda. Suddenly, they're flawless, or at least mostly flawless. Your brain does this fun little trick where it highlights their good moments and quietly files the red flags under temporary glitches. That weird comment they made? Out of character. That time they ignored you? They were busy. That obvious pattern? Shh. This happens because emotional attachment activates the brain's reward circuitry, which biases memory recall. You're not remembering the whole person. You're remembering the best trailer. Your brain is basically running PR for someone who did not ask for a marketing team. Objectivity leaves the chat, and your mind turns into a fan account with admin privileges. Number 7. Your body joins the group chat. This is where things stop being in your head and start feeling like a medical condition. You see their name pop up and your heart jumps like it just heard a fire alarm. Your stomach flips. Your shoulders tense. Your breathing changes. You didn't decide any of this. Your body just went. That's because emotional attachment wires their presence into your autonomic nervous system, the same system that controls heart rate, digestion, and fight or flight. Your brain has quietly classified this person as emotionally relevant to survival, so their attention, or lack of it, gets treated like an environmental event. A text isn't just a text, it's a signal. Silence isn't neutral, it's a potential threat. This is why you can feel physically calm one second, then completely dysregulated the next because someone didn't reply for an hour. Your body isn't waiting for logic. It's reacting to perceived emotional safety. Basically, your nervous system is reacting like, we don't know what's happening, but we should absolutely panic just in case. Number 6. Time warps in stupid ways. When you're attached, time stops behaving like time. Five minutes of silence feels suspiciously long, like too long, long enough to overthink, long enough to spiral, long enough to mentally rewrite the relationship six times. Meanwhile, hours with them pass like someone had fast forward. You look up and suddenly it's midnight and your brain is like, wow, that was efficient. This happens because dopamine messes with your perception of time. Anticipation stretches moments. Emotional reward compresses them. Your brain isn't tracking minutes. It's tracking emotional intensity. So waiting feels unbearable. Connection feels brief. And everything in between feels distorted. You're not impatient. Your brain is literally experiencing time differently depending on whether attachment is being fed or starved. Basically, your internal clock is powered by emotional hunger, not physics. Number five, you start mentally rehearsing conversations. You're not thinking about them. You're running simulations in the shower, in bed, while staring at nothing. You replay past conversations. You imagine future ones. You craft responses to things they haven't said yet. You argue with a version of them that exists exclusively in your brain. This happens because the brain hates uncertainty more than it hates embarrassment. When attached, it tries to predict outcomes to maintain emotional safety, so it rehearses constantly. Here's the creepy part. 
imagined interactions activate many of the same neural pathways as real ones. Emotionally, your brain doesn't fully care whether it actually happened. It felt real enough. So you start bonding not just with the person, but with the idea of them, with the imagined closeness, the imagined future, the imagined resolution. Congrats! Your brain is emotionally invested in scenes that only exist in the director's cut. Number four, your identity gets soft around the edges. This is the part that sneaks up on you. You catch yourself saying things like, I wouldn't normally do this, but... That's attachment blending your sense of self with another person. Psychologists call it self-expansion. Your brain starts folding their preferences, opinions, and reactions into your identity. You care more about how you're perceived by them. Their approval hits harder than anyone else's. Their disappointment lingers longer. Not because you're weak, but because your brain has partially linked your self-worth to emotional proximity. This is why attachment can feel disorienting. You're still you, but slightly modified, like your personality has a shared folder now. You didn't lose yourself, you just temporarily uploaded parts of you to someone else's emotional cloud. 3. Withdrawal feels physical. When attachment is disrupted, distance, rejection, uncertainty, your brain reacts like something is wrong, not sad, wrong. Because chemically, attachment uses the same reward systems as addiction, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin. When those drop suddenly, your brain doesn't interpret it as emotional disappointment, it interprets it as loss of stability. That's why heartbreak hurts in your chest, why you feel restless, heavy, nauseous, exhausted, and wired all at once, why sleep breaks, appetite disappears, motivation flatlines. Your brain is in withdrawal. It lost the thing it was using to regulate mood and safety. Basically, your nervous system is staging a protest because the emotional supply chain collapsed. 2. Logic takes a coffee break. You know something isn't good for you. You know. And yet, here you are rereading old messages, justifying bad behavior, ignoring obvious patterns, hoping for crumbs. That's because emotional attachment dampens activity in the prefrontal cortex, the part responsible for logic, impulse control, and long-term thinking. Meanwhile, the emotional centers are fully online, caffeinated and shouting. So, logic whispers while feelings grab a megaphone. Advice from friends sounds distant, warnings feel dramatic, but one sign of attention from them instantly resets your worldview. You're not stupid. Your brain temporarily decided feelings were more important than facts. Basically, logic didn't disappear. It just got outvoted. 1. They become a psychological anchor. This is the deepest and creepiest one. When emotional attachment locks in, your brain uses that person as a reference point for mood, for safety, for emotional balance. When they're close, you feel grounded. When they pull away, it doesn't just feel like rejection, it feels like disorientation. You don't just miss them, you miss the version of you that existed when they were emotionally available. That's why attachment loss can feel existential instead of situational. It's not just about them, it's about who you were when your brain felt secure. Your personality didn't disappear, it just got temporarily stored in someone else's cloud. Basically, your brain tied your emotional equilibrium to one human and hoped for the best. That's all for today. I'll be making more videos like this, so subscribe if you don't want to miss them.